Hello and welcome to Counseling Ethics Lecture 13. My name is Dr. Amber Hughes. In this lecture, I want to talk about privileged communication. So remember the definition of privileged communication? It's a legal concept that protects clients from having confidential communications with their counselors disclosed in a, in a court of law without their permission. This means that a judge cannot order information that has been recognized by law as privileged to be revealed in court, okay? So we can keep confidentiality without breaking it, <clears throat> even if we have to go to a court setting. For some, for, or for privilege to apply, some requirements must be met. The communication must originate in a confidence that will not be disclosed, the element of confidentiality must be essential. The relationship must be, in the opinion of the community, conscientiously fostered. The inquiry of the disclosure would cause greater than the benefit gained. So information disclosed in a counseling session would definitely fit all of these requirements, right? Um, psychologists, psycho uh, psychiatrists, and social workers have been successful in enacting statutes uh, that grant privilege, the, uh, that grant privilege communication to uh, mental health professions. Counselor-client privilege of some type existed in 44 of the 45 states that licensed counselors in, as of 2000. Um, however, if you practice in a state this, that does not offer statutory privilege, you should inform your clients that you will keep your counseling sessions confidential, except if a judge orders you to disclose the information. Okay, uh, so again, it's a important to know the law of your state. Um, however, uh, there's a good chance that you do live in a state because 44 of the 45 states, um, and that may have changed, uh, um, grants uh, acknowledges privilege. And so that does, that means that you don't have to disclose information um, if a judge orders you to, um, if that, uh, if, if privilege is granted for the counseling relationship. Um, if no privilege exists, though, counselors should ask the court not to require the disclosure and explain the potential harm that can be done to the counseling relationship. Um, if the judge still requires the disclosure, only essential information should be revealed. Um, so as with confidentiality, you don't just want to go spill the beans, right? Um, you want to be careful and um, very specific with what information it, you are required to reveal. Complying with the judge uh, judge's order to disclose is a defense to any charge of wrongdoing made by a client. S now, statutory privilege belongs to the clients, not counselors. Okay, so we are talking about privilege here, but it, it's really our clients, um, not ours. So if you or your records are subpoenaed during a legal proceeding to disclose privilege information, it is up to your client to assert the privilege so that you will not have to disclose the information. You can't assert privilege. Uh, if the client cannot be located at the time you're asked to disclose information, um, you do have an obligation to assert privilege on behalf of the client. Okay? So again, it's your client's responsibility to assert privilege, not yours, but you can um, assert privilege on behalf of the client. Counselors should always secure legal advice of an attorney if they are asserting a client's privilege because legal procedures and questions regarding privilege are quite technical. Um, kind of a rule of thumb is that if you are practicing as a therapist alone in your own private practice, you should have an attorney on retainer at all times. Now, if you work at a larger like community center, likely they do have an attorney on retainer, so you want to make sure you're talking to your supervisor um, so that they can get you in touch with the attorney, unless they know how to um, how to respond or how to act in these situations. Um, there are exceptions to privilege that counselors should be aware of. Remember, each state varies in law regarding privilege communication, um, so you should know again the statute that exists in your state. But some of those. Um, exceptions to privilege are um, that first, a client can waive their own privilege. Since confidentiality and privilege belongs to the clients, they can waive it themselves. Usually clients who waive the privilege know their secret secrets will be revealed. So they're aware of, of, of waiving privilege for whatever, you know, whatever reason they choose. Um, second, in the death of a client, privilege can be waived if the counsel 
counselor believes that a deceased client's privilege must be asserted um, or waived, then they should contact the client's family members, their probate attorney, or their executor to determine whether a legal representat representative is available to deal with the matter. Um, and then third, privilege is generally waived in civil commitment proceedings. For example, individuals who are being evaluated by a court to determine whether they should be involuntarily committed to a psychiatric hospital, um, privilege is, is usually waived in those situations. So final thoughts, uh, know your state's laws to know if the counselor-client relationship is privileged. If not, include this in your informed consent process. Also know that privilege is your client's right and not yours.